Now, I want to read to you a few passages of scripture that should serve us all as a warning about pursuing ungodly, sinful appetites. Romans 1, 24 says, Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies amongst themselves. A different translation says, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts. Now, if you read Romans 1, 26, the Bible says, For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And if you move on to Romans 1, 28 through 35, the Bible says, And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. So on three occasions, the Bible says these four words, God gave them up. Be warned that if you are persistent in entertaining that appetite for sin, if you choose to reject God and don't repent, there are consequences. Saints, let us starve any and every desire for sin we have. Let us have an appetite for Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Satan is after your heart, and our own sinful flesh wants to attack and fill our hearts with sin. When we're having a hard day or going through tough times, it can be easy for our hearts to drift away. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. All of our thoughts, actions, and attitudes are determined by the contents of our hearts. Depending on what's in your hearts, we have the power to speak either life or death to those around us. That's why it's so important to guard our hearts. Even a trace of impurity can have grave consequences. Psalms 51 and 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. David wrote this psalm after committing one of the most wicked acts of his life. He had committed adultery with Bathsheba, plotted the murder of her husband, and attempted to cover it up in a dishonest way. When Nathan revealed his sin to him, he immediately repented. In this psalm, David cries out, Create in me a clean heart and you can almost hear the desperation in David's voice. David didn't deny the wickedness that lurked in his heart. He simply humbled himself and pleaded with God to give him a new one. Matthew 5 and 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Our reward for a pure heart is a close and fruitful relationship with the Lord. That's worth far more than any pleasure we could get from living in sin and impurity. The promise of one day seeing God face to face, communicating with Him and enjoying Him forever, that's what should motivate us to faithful obedience. When we encounter tough times, let us not be so overwhelmed to the point where we feel hopeless and discouraged. Let us not run away from our problems but instead run to Him. Let's run to Jesus Christ. Run to the one who has overcome the world, the one 
who is our refuge and strength, the one who tells us to call upon him in the day of trouble, the one who rescues us, the one who heals all our wounds and diseases. In this present day, we often find ourselves in situations where our faith is put to the test and we must decide how we will respond. But here's what the Bible says in 1 Peter 1, verse 6 to 7. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. No matter what your hardship might be, be strong in faith. Don't allow yourself to be moved, because as soon as you let go of God's sure promises, you are bound to get swept up into the madness of this world. Jesus Christ is our only sure foundation. He is our steadfast anchor. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see, faith is necessary for every believer because it's only when you have faith that you can please God. Now, let me ask you, do you really have faith or do you rely on your own judgment, your reasoning, or what your eyes can see? Are you living by faith? Are you walking by faith? When you think about some of the heroes of faith in the Bible and all of the trials they went through, you'll see that they had one thing in common. They kept believing in God. They had unwavering trust in the Lord and they were strong in faith. And let me tell you something. It takes faith to follow Jesus Christ. It takes faith to continue pushing and standing for the gospel. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. By faith, Paul and Silas were beaten, chained up, and imprisoned. But they still praised God. The three Hebrew boys refused to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar, all because they had such strong faith. These are all great examples of people who stood their ground and trusted in the Lord. Even when all the odds were against them, their faith was not shaken. Their faith was not broken because they knew that the God whom they served is bigger, greater, and more powerful than anything or anyone else who they could come up against. All these people were pushed to pray because of the trials they went through and the obstacles they faced. Let us be encouraged to do the same. Let us not run away from our problems, but instead run to Him. Let's run to Jesus Christ. In the book of Matthew, Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. That's why we can stand confidently in Him. That's why we can cling to Him 